So here's a case where we have a tactics box from the book, and this is kind of a problem solving strategy for one section of the problem. And this is in particular for drawing your interaction diagram. So the interaction diagram um, is this. And that is what we just talked about with the system, the environment, the force lines. So that is our interaction diagram. Your free body diagram is then down here. So you would do the interaction diagram before your free body diagram using the results of your interaction diagram to figure out how to draw your free body diagram. So in your uh, interaction diagram, you would make sure to actually have your surface and the earth, again, having them separately in the environment can be helpful uh, since you know that the surface is a contact force, the entire earth is long range forces, i.e. gravity. And you also want to make sure then you have each object. And so this would be your person in box or maybe two cars pulling on each other, whatever the situation is. So then you need to identify the interactions. Now these are going to be forces, right? On your free body diagram, these are forces. But right now each line is representing a pair of forces. If it is, um, going to be entirely in your system, then that's going to be helpful. Now make sure that you're only connecting two objects per line. A line has two ends. And a surface can only have two interactions, friction and normal force. And I think this is really helpful to remember. Um, again, don't start talking about the force of motion. And so please make sure that you're remembering that the surface has these two forces, that's it. The entire Earth gives you gravitational forces. So again, one reason to split them up is so that you always say a surface has these two and the entire Earth has this one. So then you need to identify your system and this is up to you, but usually there's going to be a right choice depending on what the problem is. You want to figure out what am I actually analyzing? And again, for the situation of the person pushing a crate, you could have only been analyzing the crate, in which case the person can be considered part of your environment. But you might also be considering the person, in which case the person needs to be part of your system. So after you've identified your system, you're done with your interaction diagram. Now you go back to your free body diagram. And again, at this case, once you're dealing with forces, you really should be drawing a free body diagram every single time. So remember that for each point, right, each object gets their own point and we have our different, uh, sorry, we have our different forces acting on it, right? F1, F2, F3. Each of these forces are the forces on the object not exerted by the object. And this is important. Remember that every force has an agent and an object. So for each of these forces, this is its object, not the agent. So please be careful about that. Now, when you go back to your interaction diagram, you can use this to identify your forces. Every line crossing the system boundary is one external force and again, friction, things like that. Now, internal forces are an action-reaction pair. And because of that, we know that there's a relationship between them. So this means that there are two objects to think about. And so this is a pair of forces to include on your free body diagram. And this is something new we're now going to show is that we are actually going to connect the action-reaction forces with a dashed line. And this will be something that's helpful. Again, the whole point of this is that by being very careful in our notation, we're able to analyze the situation carefully and ideally see places where we're being inconsistent or contradictory. So for the person pushing the crate that was introduced in the previous section on system and environment, we're going to draw the free body diagram. Now, something that's important here is you notice that there are two free body diagrams corresponding to two different objects. 
So remember, for each object in your system, draw a separate free body diagram. You do not put this on the same free body diagram because these are separate objects. So on the person, we had a normal force from the surface, we had a frictional force from the surface, and we had a gravitational force from the object. So these were our external forces. And again, those forces, uh, the lines that represented that on our interaction diagram, went from our system to the external environment, so we don't expect to find a action-reaction pair that it's part of. On the other hand, we had a line that was connecting our two objects, and as the person pushed on the crate, the crate would push back on the person, and so we see that. We see this notation here. C stands for crate, so crate on person. And so since this is the force acting on the person, it goes on the person's free body diagram. And now when we look over at the crate, we see the pair force. So these are the internal or uh, internal to the system, right? Internal to system, which means that you should be able to find that action reaction pair. Now our crate had its own normal force, its own gravitational force, and its own frictional force. And in this case, none of these are, are action-reaction pairs with the person. These were action-reaction pairs with forces that were acting on our environment, so we're not, they're not shown. We haven't drawn a free body diagram for those. So in this case, you have two gravitational forces. They should be distinguished somehow with subscripts by how you name them. And it should be done in a pretty obvious way. Same for friction, same for normal force. And as much as I like my F sub N for normal force, once you have subscripts on your normal force, it is much more convenient to just use N vector. Now, frictional forces, we frequently try to denote the difference between static and kinetic. So if these were kinetic, you would maybe write F K P F K C to denote that those were oops, kinetic. Um, but again, it, try to use subscripts to help you keep track of what you're doing and communicate that back to me. So the final thing that is new, now that we have these two free body diagrams, we draw this dashed line to show that these forces are related. And so later on, we get to say that because FC on P and FP on C are action-reaction pairs, we get to say that FP on C is exactly equal to the negative force C on P. They are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So again, you should be setting up all of the physics on your free body diagram, which includes recognizing when you have action-reaction pairs. And please make sure that you've drawn a free body diagram for every object that is in your system.